In the relentless pursuit of peak performance, athletes are constantly discovering new things to help them perform at their best. Welcome to episode eight of No Stone Unturned, where we unravel the microscopic worlds of peptides and their profound impacts on human performance. We'll also talk about their health impacts and some drawbacks that might exist that many people don't talk about. As we dive into this episode, we're gonna peel back the layers of these small but mighty compounds, uncovering their roles as the silent conductors of human potential and body regulation. From enhancing endurance to accelerating recovery to regulating blood sugar, peptides are emerging as game changers in the world of sport. Join us on a journey through the science, the breakthroughs, the legalities, the WADA compliance, and everything there is to know about peptides and the untold stories behind these miniature powerhouses. This series is brought to you by Perfect Sports, Canada's number one supplement brand now available worldwide. If you check the description, there's a code for 30% off if you live in Canada and a link to international distribution if you live anywhere else in the world. Not only were they the first ones to bring New Zealand whey protein to North America, but they make, in my opinion, the best pre-workout I've ever had, and you can get all of your dietary staples through Perfect Sports. At the end of each video, I'm gonna provide a score based on three crucial aspects. Personal experience, the scientific evidence, and the practicality for the average athlete. You'll be able to compare it to other dimensions in this series, and hopefully at the end, you get some practical takeaways to improve your own training. Our journey begins with a trip that I took down to Nashville with a company called Blokes to get my blood tested and analyzed to see what do I need to perform at my absolute best. But before we dive in, let's take a step back and talk about the general case for certain peptides. Now, you're gonna find out there's not actually a lot of great evidence to suggest here, the benefits and the drawbacks. There's not the research that I usually like to have on these things. And whilst we might not have a lot of listed side effects at the moment, it's just because we haven't done enough research to find out what the side effects are. This is a little bit of an informed Russian roulette, so to speak. And on the legal side, it really depends where you live. We're gonna talk about that later, but nothing of what I say here is in any way an instruction for anyone to take any peptide and put anything into their body. This is strictly talking about the absolute limit of human performance and what I'm doing to get the most out of myself. Let's talk first about what peptides actually are. In our body, we have protein and we also have dietary protein and that is broken down into amino acids. We put strings of amino acids together and then we call that a protein. Some type of protein structure will make chicken, some type of protein structure will make whey protein, some protein structure will make salmon, etc., etc. Peptides are short chains of amino acids that have certain functions in the body and the most well-known peptide is actually insulin. And insulin, of course, regulates blood sugar and is extremely powerful. These occur naturally in our body and they are really important mechanisms to signal actions downstream to get whatever desired effects that peptide has. Now, we also can produce these exogenously and we can put them into our body to have the same similar type of effect of if they were produced within our body. Peptides and hormones are often confused with each other a little bit. Peptides are short chains of amino acids, which is technically a protein, and hormones are derived from cholesterol. Now, peptides work so that they conduct signals and stimulate processes to occur down chain, where hormones themselves are actual the, actually the messengers themselves. So peptides are an indirect way to potentially get more hormone. For example, you can take a a peptide that helps produce more growth hormone, which will then have the same effect of growth hormone, but all of that growth hormone was synthesized within your body. Before we talk about the actual substances that I've been taking and that I'm gonna talk about today, I wanna to talk about both the law side and the athlete side of taking these substances. First of all, in terms of legality, it, it's a fast changing world in terms of what peptides are legal in which places. And right now it seems that most countries allow for most peptides for quote unquote recreational use. Now in the US, one, one peptide that was found to be illegal is BPC-157. We're gonna talk about that one, but that is actually not allowed to be taken in the United States. It is legal and okay in Canada. Now you're gonna have to check out for yourself where you live and what your current law is, but just understand that it's a fast developing issue. And it's very possible that something that's legal today might not be legal tomorrow. And I actually support them making these things illegal, at least in the short term. 
because we will get to the research and we just don't really know. The other side to it is the athlete side and conclusively, Peptides are not allowed if you're in a tested sport in any way. Anyone in basketball or football or baseball is technically not allowed to be taking any peptides. This being said, I am extremely skeptical of how athletes at the highest level get back from injury at an extremely fast rate without something like this to help them. So you can make your own conclusions, make your own guesses, but tested sports aside, let's go ahead and let's talk to blokes, get my blood work done and see what is their recommendation for me to be performing at an optimal level without sacrificing my health. Eight of the 10 most common causes of death are lifestyle related. And all of those can be tracked through getting your blood tested. And let's go one step less severe. Maybe you're not dying from it, but maybe it's something that then causes you to not be able to work. If you feel like it's gonna attack your manhood by finding out that your cholesterol sucks, your testosterone is low because you see this number, well, how is that manhood gonna feel if now you, you can't get off the couch? Now you're in a wheelchair, now you can't go to work, now your wife has to work and someone has to take care of the kids because you can't. Those are the things where you take a small problem now that can be solved, and you push that down the track and it turns into something much more substantial. One of the things we talked about it, that you believe in are peptides. Mm -hmm. Tell me your just overall thoughts on peptides and what is a peptide? Well, uh, a, a peptide is something that signals your body to do something. So insulin is the, the best, most common example where insulin signals your body to store away glucose and manages blood sugar by reducing the levels of sugar in your blood, of course. This is one of the things where my personal experience takes precedence over uh, the research that I've found because the reality is we don't have uh, huge amounts of meta-analysis over the long run in terms of, of research. Uh, and the difficult thing is with how the system operates right now, for whatever reason, I doubt ethics would pass peptides on people, which is absurd. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that that's happening right now. Yeah. So. Um, you know, all, all we can then go off is personal experience to an extent. But I think one thing that's important because peptides are becoming really popular. One thing that's important is these are not new. This is not a new concept. This is not a new thing. There's, there's no way that this can sort of enter your body and do some unexpected thing in 20 years time. People take insulin for their whole lives and are totally fine. Now, it's not to say every peptide ever invented could, will be amazing, but the, the foundation of peptides in general is very strong. They can have a positive effect. Now, myself personally, I started taking peptides and really changed nothing else about my life. And my body composition is, I, I can't even believe how different my body composition is for being the same weight. And this is on top of everything else I do. I do everything I can to have as much muscle and be as lean as possible, as strong as I can be. And this just took it to a whole nother level when I was already at the top. Uh, but then the power production and the, the results since I've started peptides have been absurd and I've stayed relatively healthy the whole time. Uh, just to talk through some of those results. On peptides, I won World's Strongest Man 2023. I won the Arnold 2023. I won the Rogue Invitational in 2023. The first person to ever win all three of those in the same year. Second person to ever do that. Then I won the Arnold this year. That's the second time ever someone's done Arnold World Arnold. And now I'm gonna attempt to win World's Strongest Man, which will be the first time ever to do uh, Arnold World, Arnold World. Those are our two biggest shows in the same year. The results are there in, in magnitude. Um, but probably even more to the point, last year in August, I completed a show and on day one, I tore my hamstring and my whole inner thigh was black, classic hamstring tear. That was at the end of August. I had a competition at the end of October, right? So we've got eight weeks. That is about the time to just heal a tissue under normal circumstances, not prepare for a show. That's just to then start preparing for a show, but I had eight weeks. So I called the promoter and I said, I think I'm out. Uh, give me a couple of weeks, but I think I'm out. Let me just see what I can do. It took peptides. It took all of a week and a half to come around, prepared, and I won the show. And that to me, that is the most concise way to say this stuff is magic in a way.
it's just incredible for a sport where injuries are so rampant. For context, that's the first time I've ever tore something where I've actually bruised up. That doesn't happen easily for me. It's legitimate physical trauma that just week and a half, I was back training, back deadlifting with a torn hamstring and I was, and I was fine. Now, of course, it would be upper limits to the capacity of what it is, but the evidence to accelerate recovery is insane. Yeah, you mentioned those injuries of, of, about peptides. What about just, you know, overall peptides and every day, you know, whether it's, or just, just anything to, like some of these therapies that you've talked about, how, how does, how do you think it makes you better as a dad and a father? Well, in my circumstance in particular, like, I think we all put different demands on our body, right? I think mine is very obvious where I'm the world's strongest man. So I'm training hard. And if I'm too sore, I can't really do anything. And I don't really have the energy for anything else. And so they allow me to not be sore and to have a little bit more energy. But I think what's less recognized is the demands that other people place on their bodies who aren't professional athletes. Your demand could be a primarily psychological demand, or it could be that you're a, a bricklayer, a mason, and you're just down your knees and you're, you're sore and stiff. Well, let's say over the course of time, because I don't think anything will make you feel better like that, right? At, at a minimum, it'll take a couple of months. But over time, the, the most normal part of the aging process is uh, drying out, right? And some people will talk about wrinkles as drying out. Some people talk about arthritis as drying out. And the age protective factor of both testosterone and growth hormone and keeping those in optimal levels when otherwise they would crash well, it's going to keep your body more hydrated. And let's say it's more hydrated. So in the morning, when you step out of bed, you're not creaking and stiff. When you go to get down on the ground with your child, it's not going to make you feel like your back is, is going to explode. You're going to be able to do those things that you're able to do, or that you should be able to do for your child to just really simply look up to you. Like if I was the world's strongest man and I couldn't play with her toy when she's two or three years old and I can't be down on the ground, she's not looking up to me. She's not proud of me. She's not going, yeah, but it's because he's the world's strongest. They don't have that capacity and they shouldn't. And you shouldn't either. It should be my, my foundation is that I can play with my child, that I have time, that I have energy. And then on top of that, it's okay, well, what more can I do? But that should be step number one. And for me, the higher level stuff is taken care of. I can do that and that's fine. But it's the lower level stuff that that's the first thing that will suffer if I don't treat my body how I should. And I think a lot of people are that way. And it's from a lot of different uh, contexts. I, I heard the term uh, by a guy who's in finance in, in New York and they call Adderall Daderall because it's not about performing at work. It's about having capacity to do anything while you're at home. And it's the same concept. Like if you can maintain the energy that you have towards your profession in your personal life, well then your, your relationship with your family and your relationships with your, your children will benefit dramatically. So let's talk about the peptides that I've been recommended. First is BPC-157. This has gained huge traction in the last little while. And it actually originates in the human gut. This is a natural thing that we produce ourselves. Now we, can create that exogenously, of course. And when that's created, then we can put it into our body and get the full benefit uh, without it existing in our gut. Uh, but it does show consistent positive effects for various injury types, both traumatic and systematic for a plethora of soft tissues. In Strongman, we beat up our soft tissues like no tomorrow, whether it's just from our muscles pulling on it, from an actual implement landing on us, or just from day-to-day -day life existing and building total cumulative volume. This is an absolute game changer. The mechanism by which BPC-157 acts is not very well understood. And that's because this didn't have a clinical medical origination. And there's a lot of hypothesis as to how this could be working but it's almost useless to talk about myself because in the end, I am not an expert on this. I'm consulting experts on this to be able to get the most from myself. Next is TB4 or thymosin beta-4. This is probably the second most popular peptide in terms of performance that people have been speaking about recently. Uh, TB4 is a known hormone that is secreted from the thymus. The primary function here is to stimulate the production of T cells, which has a very important role in the immune system. TB4 is actually first used to help reduce 
tumor growth and help to treat cancer. This is actually how a lot of these products start. And then people in the high performance world say, well, oh, that might be a good idea for us as well. Uh, then usually then people find out about it, then it gets banned and then so on and so forth. Uh, but it did start for a very good medical clinical reason. Uh, now, in addition to the T cells and the immune function that TB4 has, it also has a role in what's called actin sequestering molecule, and it plays an important role in tissue repair. Now, this is if you, say, have torn a muscle or micro torn a muscle like we do in training, it can help you recover that muscle a little bit faster. The mechanism of action for TB4 to cause tissue regeneration is relatively complicated. It binds to actin to promote cell migration, which induces mobilization, migration, and differentiation of stem cells, which forms new blood vessels and regenerates the tissue. This is, of course, not as potent as taking stem cells themselves, but it is a pathway by which it has a similar mechanism and can help you in some similar, albeit less severe ways. Last, we're now gonna talk about tesamorelin. Tesamorelin is a growth hormone releasing analog that can increase IGF-1. IGF-1 helps to increase the potency of growth hormone in your body, similar to taking extra growth hormone without having the side effects of taking more growth hormone. Uh, now, this can bind and stimulate growth hormone receptor hormones, which of course assists in all of the positive effects that we can get from growth hormone. It's got a lot of clout recently for its uh, anti-aging, and I'm talking about growth hormone, I'm talking about its anti-aging properties. I have one major issue with anyone taking growth hormone, and that is that it is incredibly non-specific, and it can grow any organ in your body, and that is incredibly dangerous and definitely not a good idea. The one saving grace though, when it comes to testamorelin, is that it has not been linked to significantly affect any other pituitary hormones and other mechanisms of the body. It seems to be mostly linked to reducing visceral fat and increasing bone tendon stiffness and increasing muscle size. Now, the mechanism of action here is that it activates a growth hormone receptor hormone, which leads to synthesis and release of growth hormone that acts on multiple cells in the body, including hepatocytes, where it stimulates production of insulin-like growth factor one or IGF-1, hepatocytes meaning your liver, of course. Now, those are the three peptides that I was advised to take and that I have been taking. I have found that it has been actually really good. I have found incredibly positive results. I feel really good. My body composition has gotten a lot better and I haven't had to take other steps that might be more negative to my health. Now, I might be one of the lucky ones who just hasn't had side effects, or maybe I just haven't had side effects yet. This very well could be something that in 10 years time, people who are taking it now turn back and think, well, that was a big mistake because now I have X, Y, and Z problem. And that's why I call it a bit of Russian roulette to an extent if you're doing this without consulting a actual medical professional, which I am. And if you're thinking of this yourself, 100%, you have to speak to an expert first. Otherwise, you just don't know what you're doing because this is so new. You need to be talking to someone who has the utmost level of knowledge before you make any type of consideration in this area. Some side effects of peptides like BPC could be nausea, dizziness, hot flashes, blood pressure fluctuations that then lead to liver and kidney complications. That's why regular blood work is gonna be really important as well. With testamorelin, difficulty with moving, muscle pain and stiffness, pain, pain in the joints, arms and legs are all relatively common side, side effects for those as well. I don't think indigestion is one, but I have that independent of those side effects. <laughs> um, and then for TB4, the, the side effects are uh, reddening pain and discomfort on injection side, of course especially if you use a larger needle, but it largely seems to come with no side effects. Some people might see this as a huge positive, but to me, I just see this as we just don't know what they are yet. Now, let's talk about the evidence. I am huge on the evidence. And frankly, this series is partially that I'm pushing the evidence to the backseat a bit, saying, let me experience this, let me try all of this, and let's see what my experience is, and then go find the research afterwards. So I told you, my experience is I am stronger than I've ever been. My body composition is better than it's ever been at this body weight at 325 pounds. My energy is not very good, to be honest. That's a regular difficulty for me, but I think I demand more of my body and my mind than I ever have with everything that's going on for me right now. Uh, but this to me is just 
it's been an absolute game changer and I'm inc incredibly thankful to have come across this. That being said, we went and we looked at the research and we tried and we tried and we tried. The number of systematic reviews and meta-analyses that we could find is zero when it comes to young, healthy people and recovering from injury or athletic performance or building muscle or reducing fat. Because the fact of the matter is right now, no ethics board would approve a study on these in large scale for someone with no problems because we can't be totally confident on the safety as a broad rule. Just like insulin, we know what insulin does. We're not gonna approve a study for young healthy people to take insulin to see if they can grow more muscle because we know that insulin is dangerous if used improperly. And I think that's really what I wanna summarize here is that these are incredibly powerful and incredibly useful but only if you use them correctly. If you use them incorrectly, they can be incredibly harmful and dangerous. So you have to find out, like, are you in a place where you're willing to take on a bit of danger? Are you in a place where you can contact a company like Blokes and you can get your blood work done and get as the, the best advice that you possibly can to try to improve your health? Now we turn into a totally separate conversation if we're talking to men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, where maybe your, your actual hormone profile isn't what it should be. And we're even seeing younger and younger men and women at the moment, especially women who have taken birth control and you've actively modified your hormones for many, many, many years. And we see that their hormone profiles are actually not right in their 20s and 30s. These are things that you just don't know until you get tested. And one thing that I'm a big advocate of is let's not wait for 10, 20, 30 years until you're sick and unwell to find out that this is a problem that you should be solving. Let's solve that problem before that turns into a major issue. So. I would 100% recommend that anyone out there goes and gets their blood work tested as a consideration for something like this if your levels are off. If your blood work comes back and your levels are perfect, well, phenomenal. Now you have a great baseline so that any time in the future, if you're not feeling right, now you can go and get the blood work tested. The topic of hormones and by proxy peptides has become extremely hot hitting information at the moment and something that people get really up in arms about and worried about your health. But we've been encouraging young women to change their hormones for several decades now for pregnancy control. And we seem to have no issue with that. We seem to have no problem giving hormone changing pills to every single women, young woman out there looking to prevent pregnancy. But what about middle-aged people who want to improve their health? What about younger people who have a poor hormone profile who need to improve their health before it turns into a problem. Maybe this could be a great way that we actually increase our health span rather than our lifespan by nipping some of these problems in the bud and getting your blood work done. Could you be changing your hormones with peptides? And could you be living longer because of it? It's possible. Now, I've had a great personal experience with peptides. The scientific evidence is really sort of out to lunch. Eventually we're gonna find out how good are they, how dangerous are they, and uh, all of that. But, I'm gonna rank this a nine out of 12. This ties with monitoring health because I see it as much the same thing. For the vast majority of people, your goal in order to get your body to function optimally and to get the most out of yourself is to be as healthy as possible. I put it all the way down at nine because frankly, if you're not injured and you're not in any sort of negative state in terms of your blood work, you just don't need to be doing this. But if I was just talking about getting your blood work done in the first place, I put that all the way up as, as high as anything. So my, my solid recommendation is please go get your blood work done, no matter how good, bad, or otherwise you feel. Get that checked and figure out what might be going wrong, what levels might be off, and you might find some stuff that you should have got on top of long time ago, or you might be nipping something in the butt. Regardless, there will be an action plan off the back of that for you to be able to be as healthy as possible. We have very few looks into our body and its actual health. We have our blood pressure for our cardiovascular system and we have our blood work for all of our hormones, micronutrients, uh, and things like long-term blood sugar levels that could be massively impacting your long-term health before you even know it. As always guys, lift heavy and be kind. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed me opening up a little bit on this taboo topic.